Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Nina is me, Bazan Koma. Bazan koma baya Nina Yesu ne Bazan koma James chapter 4 and verse 8 What is the call tonight and what is the solution James chapter 4 please give it to us media very quickly and verse 8 Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you he said cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double-minded the first call is draw nigh to god not draw nigh to fame not draw nigh to a name not draw nigh to spiritual activities in other words listen take serious your relationship with god it does not just give you value to be relevant it is your system of preservation Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 6 now beckons on us to come boldly. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. To come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. So when you see somebody like Baba Adeboe and many of our fathers, you want to talk with them and they will say, come back on Friday. I am alone with God. It does not make sense alone with God looking for what again? and they lock up themselves shut themselves away from any fame and any whatever oh we want to give you an award no i'm not interested i'm spending time with the god of heaven you now know why people seek god passionately they seek god passionately first because they love him but they seek him as life he is literally the basis of survival I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back. I've heard of many, many pastors that were matired in the north since when I was in Zaria. I heard of a pastor who was, by the way, I saw the man of God from Adamawa State. May God bless you. They used to bring me many years from Mubi. They, they bring me to Mubi. When there was crisis in Mubi, and you know terrorists came and ravaged that place when the church was about to come back to, uh, together you know they invited me over for a program and such gracious and loving people I, I've, I've seen them kill people a man who told his wife I do not know whether I will survive next week and truly he died it's easy to say may their soul rest in peace but when you stand face to face with what can take your life that's when you will know whether you have stamina or not it's not when somebody is on a wheelchair if the person does not get up they will not arrest you you will just say god bless you stir up your faith let's see in another meeting save johnny but when you stand before somebody who says jesus or the world not even just death house rent and you can compromise and get your rent in a moment or you can stand for jesus genuinely but there are consequences, including driving you from that place. And you know, most people look at the story of the Hebrew boys and just say that, um, well, Jesus came. Read your Bible and see those who stood and still died. Including Jesus. Father, take this cup off me. The father kept quiet. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You thought the father would say such humility. I've canceled death. He still died. I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back. So the revival that is coming will be enhanced. The greatest tool we need, brothers and sisters, is the formation of the character of the Christ. That means you are in your office and people are bribing. Everybody is becoming a millionaire overnight. And you make up your mind and say, I'm going to stand. They will look at you and say, you, are, you, are, you have been stupid for a long time. 
Do you know what it means for your juniors to come and be buying cars, estates, manipulating all kinds of things, and you are there claiming you are standing for Jesus? Five years, nothing changes. There are many people in this country who would have been higher than they are now, except that they are stand for Jesus. They were determined that I will not bend. The greatest tool for the revival coming will not be anointing. There are many anointed people who could not stand the revival's past. It is not going to be revelation, Greek and Hebrew. You will talk Greek and Hebrew before the flesh. The flesh will give you the Hebrew and the Greek version of what it means to fall. Samson was anointed. Abraham the Great, even the man who was the friend of God. What of Moses? Moses, a man who saw God face to face, the Bible says, yet because of anger, uncontrolled anger, God said you will not enter the promised land. He was not angry for himself. He was angry for a stiff-necked people. You will never understand what Moses went through until God makes you a leader over people. One moment they are singing, Moses, congratulations for bringing us out of Egypt. The next moment they are saying, Moses, we don't understand you and this your God. Aaron, build for us a God that we will bow to. You know what it meant when Jesus stood there with Barabbas and saw people who ate his bread at his crusade? They said, crucify him. Madam, you who I raise your son, don't talk to me. Crucify him. Hosting the revival and the power of God may mean standing alone. It may mean sacrificing your potential for prosperity for life. Yes, sir. Jesus obtained a physical scar in his hand. That was what it took for redemption. There are people today who have physical deficiencies in their lives that they incurred not by carelessness. It was the price for standing for Jesus. Nina Yesune Bazankoma Bazankoma Baya. The character of the Christ, more than Christian talk, more than Christian whatever. Let me say this as we wrap up. I submit to you and I say this with every sense of honor and respect to my generation. We need to be careful. The level of carelessness in every area. Are we together now? It is my life. That is the language of a generation that is not thinking well. It is my life. I don't care. I can do anything I want to do. It is my life. Dress anyhow. It is my life. Talk anyhow. It is my life. Everybody is talking about revival, clapping about revival, and sometimes respectfully speaking, you see the kind of carelessness and the presence of flesh and yet we keep advocating revival. God is not a fool. I know God will give me 10,000 people to train. You know what it means for God to trust you with 10,000 souls that he died for to train. Some of them millionaires. Some of them struggling with the flesh. It takes stamina. It is true that a revival is coming. It is true that God is moving across the earth. It is true that God is looking for men and women that are available. No matter how you fall under the anointing, no matter how you stand, no matter how people accredit you, let me tell you, the testimony of character with God, that uprightness, it must become, you must take advantage of the grace of God and stand in faith, a broken and a contrite heart, Psalm 51 verse 17, Oh Lord, you will not despise. This is my message tonight. You must get to a point where you are broken before God. The, let me tell you the truth. The greatest unbecoming of this revival will be an, a, a manifestation of pride. The Bible says, Let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he falls. There are many in the body who have fallen at different levels. There are many today, some we know, some we've heard, some we see. The only thing we owe our fallen soldiers in the body 
is number one our prayers and number two within the jurisdiction given to us if we can have access to encourage them to stand this is what it we have because in your lifetime let me tell you it's like the hand of a clock it is coming and it will still come to you you hear that maybe arm robbers came and stole something in a man of god's church don't just get up and say it does not have faith shame on them and embarrassment to redemption no even if you don't know him god bless you I heard that this happened to you. We pray that the Lord will stand with you and stand by you. How is your wife and family? May the Lord honor you. You have made your own contribution. Because you see, let me tell you, you do not know the kind of evil that will come upon the earth. You hear that somebody has been bereaved. Don't sit down there and be talking and saying, these people, they don't have, when they were teaching about long life, they were not there. You should be the first to go there and say, look, we're standing with you. This is one of the blessings that I learned from this, our orthodox background. Respectfully speaking, Pentecostal and charismatic circles. When people go through down times in their lives, they are the first to push people away. When you give birth to children, when you have promotion, we men of God are quick to bring you. You are my son and you are my daughter. But when something tragic happens, they go to your local church somewhere. The level of hatred that is in the body of Christ. The level of jealousy that is in the body of Christ. The level of ill wishing one for another that is in the body of Christ. And yet we all stand to claim that revival will come. It's a joke. No. Are we together? A man of God starts ministry and you are laughing. Oh, this one is not, he has only two members sorry for him no it shouldn't be so when we held our first crusade i'm not even sure we're more than 50. i can't remember if we're up to 50. you would have laughed at that the group of 50 people but this is what god is doing today that's why when dr panam he was preaching my message with what he was doing when I saw these precious people, I know some of them, they may not carry the comeliness of celebrity musicians. So they don't, they are not what your applauds. I mean, what this lady is playing, this and that. But tomorrow you see these same people singing the praises of Jesus to the nations and you quickly bring this and say, please autograph it for me. Our world for you. My charge tonight is that the greatest tool, I repeat again, for the revival coming will be more it will take more than anointing to lift up jesus and represent him it will take more than excellent preaching i know that africa and the world has exceptional people god has granted us grace in the area of revelation but make no mistakes we are not the first there are people who have come before us who were like the epitome of the exegesis of scripture and yet the revival still failed in their watch there are many men of God in Nigeria and yet Nigeria is still the way it is. That should already humble us that there is koinonia in Nigeria alongside many ministries and we keep bragging with the little we have done yet the nation is still acting as if there are no believers. It should humble us to say, Lord, we need you. There is something that we do not have. A broken and a contrite heart. Dr. Panam got it absolutely when he wrote the song, Lord, we are sorry. We've turned around, we've done all kinds of things. He says, now we repent, forgive us, Lord, we pray, and then restore, bring down your glory. It was not a special number. It was a prophetic word for many years that will come. We need to repent of many things. Listen to my message, the purified church. I'm sure you've got, use it as a retreat material. There are people shouting, attacking immorality, attacking a lot of things. But there are other aspects of lack of character too. There are others who are attacking money because they are not collecting money. What of pride? What of jealousy? Then there are people who are, everything that corrupts the heart must be dealt with without sparing. No matter how small and no matter how great. The deception of stratifying the flesh and say these are weightier matters simply because they carry a heavier sociological embarrassment no everything you find jealousy in your heart 
deal with it. Lust, deal with it. Pride, deal with it. Anger, deal with it. How do you deal with it? You don't have the power, but you can submit yourself before the presence of the one who deals with it. Now you understand the mystery of the woman with the alabaster box. When she brought it, she broke it. The posture of the champions in our generation, let me show you. This is going to be the posture. Those who are standing may not even find the ground that they will stand upon. This is the posture of champions for the revival that is coming. While people are clapping for you and while people are calling you names, you are by the altar crying for mercy. Lord, purge my heart, purge my life, purge my ministry. Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going around the nations. Lord, shut my ears from all of this beyond the level that is enough to encourage me. You are a CEO. You are the next Dangote. Congratulations. This is the posture. I want you to get this because God is speaking to all of us. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Take away hatred from my life. Take away jealousy from my life. Take away pride from my life. When you get a woman pregnant, her stomach will protrude and everybody will know. So it will bring a shame, a shame to you. But if you carry the spirit of jealousy, there is no physical evidence. They are called sins of the spirit. They are dangerous things that can kill. This perfectionist mentality we are advocating in the body of Christ is going to destroy a generation. If fathers keep rebuking the generation, they have earned the right to by their character. But let me challenge young people, especially younger ministers. Let us be careful the way we use our mouth talking. We are just starting the journey. There are many heights. There are many challenges that are coming. I've heard of people insulting politicians. God forbid. Many people have said God forbid and today their heads have remained down and they cannot lift it forever again because they vowed and said a lot of things. We need to be careful. The language of a man of God in this end time is the language of mercy. Lord grant us grace. It is by your mercy that we stand. It is by your mercy that we do what we are doing. If I go for a crusade and somebody rises from a wheelchair, while you are clapping and say this apostle is anointed i say lord i know that it is by your mercy thank you for that grace mama if you raise six children and they are all excellent don't start laughing at a woman who is having a son that is drinking because your children have not died yet there are people who became foolish at 55. there is still hope for the devil if the person does not stand through humility I am 10 years in ministry that's too early too early for any noise too early for any pride a man of God called me one day and said apostle you have such vast experience in ministry I said hold on what you see is the mercy of God I can share with you the little that I have and not little in a way of demeaning myself our sufficiencies of God but let me tell you the truth if you think I can give you the kind of advice Baba Deboe will give you, I will be stupid to believe I can do that. Do you know what it means to sit down over tens of thousands of churches? You don't know who is planning what against you. And yet you can get up in the morning and thank the Lord and not be angry. There are many people who have not controlled two children. Respectfully speaking, when Baba's son transited in glory, I happened to be there at the burial. And when I was watching everything, all that was in my heart was my God. Look at the burden that is on this man. And sometimes as I'm coming for koinonia, there are documents to sign. There are meetings. There are several things. Sometimes you see me just coming. You don't know what I was doing before I came. This is our own little kindergarten, whatever we're doing. You, there are men of God who as at the time they are standing to preach their wives are in ICU and yet they are mandated by their covenant of righteousness to still preach there are even people while they are preaching an obituary comes and they say just to let you know your cousin just died that can destabilize them yet they will stand and preach and counsel please hear my voice again let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he falls 
to our brethren in the body of Christ who have found themselves fallen, there is hope for you. You can stand, provided there is brokenness. Dr. Panam again sang and brought to the body of Christ. He says, don't give up, it is not over. He said, even when you fail, it is not over. The righteous man falls seven times, the Bible says, but he will rise again. So this is the encouragement. When you see a young minister who is misbehaving, don't insult them and just tear them down and discourage them. There is still a revivalist. Guide them in love. You who are matured and tell them, listen, you need to drop these excesses. Are we together? When you see those who are standing, encourage them. May God grant you the grace. Oh, I don't need that. I'm okay. I'm fine. I know what to do. <laughs> One day I was traveling somewhere and the way the plane was shaking. I'm not talking of this mild shake in the air. Shaking that you know that even you know the people around. You know there's a way they behave that God is only you that will help us. I just told myself, I said, Lord... If this is going to be the moment to die, please help me and take care of my parents, take care of my siblings, all these my precious children that I'm taking care of. Help me raise somebody who can do that work and let me be with you in peace. That plane was shaking almost as if we're all going to die. Sincerely, if I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. When we landed, people clapped. Round of applause to the pilot for being able to walk through. I don't know what kind of demonic cloud that was. So next time you are confessing, for me to live is Christ. Pause. You can stop there till the day your faith finishes the other verse. And to die is gain. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Revival is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, to the revivalists, to the apostles, both manifesting now and in the making, do not allow anyone and anything discourage you. Some of you are very stubborn. God will still use you, but not that version of you. You need to repent. Hallelujah. Some of you would think it does not matter. A gentleman sent me a text and said, what do I think about tattoos? I said, if you have it before you were born again, there's nothing that can, happen, that can happen. But if by the time you are born again and you still want to do all of these things, you see, all things are lawful, but not all. In the kingdom, it's not all about sinfulness and righteousness. There are times it's about foolish and wise. There were 10 virgins. They were all virgins. And yet, as virgins, they still suffered because five were foolish and five were wise. Are we together now? If I draw a mouse on my head now and I come to preach and I say it's my life, it's not my business, please don't feel bad. I'm just, just to touch on it and then we'll pray. Are we together? And you don't, I, I just tell you, how will you believe if I'm praying for you? <laughs> Let's not say these things don't matter and keep making a fool out of ourselves. No, sir. If, it's, if someone did it in the past and the person has come to the fold, there's nothing we can do. Believe us, let's be careful respectfully speaking some of these things we ship from the west i'm not condemning but the west needs the mercy of africa god is shipping people to correct things there the generation of people who have risen right now uh, is a generation that does not respect god just because they are technologically advanced does not mean they are spiritually advanced don't trade your heritage of spirituality are we together Get back to the things that produce power indeed. Get back to the place of prayer in the morning. But more than all this, your heart condition. Please, I'm giving you an assignment this week. Go and dedicate any one of the days and just spend at least two hours alone with God. It doesn't matter whether you are husband and wife. Do it differently. Please ask for permission and just say, God, some of you need to go back and say, Lord, I'm not coming to the, the, the Western ideology that I'm meeting now. 
I'm coming to the God of my covenant that knew me before I rose. Lord, have mercy. What am I doing wrong? Where am I missing it with my life? And be very sincere. If it is the God of heaven, he will not condemn you, but he will also not condone. He will come with his fire, the refiner's fire, and tear that dross apart. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. Practice periodic retreats never be too busy for retreats shut down even if it means to shut down administration politely apologize to the people and say the 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 the, the nature of things around my spiritual life please i need two days alone with god sometimes you need to tell your friends please please oh we, we need to go and watch the movie as an man you is playing can't you watch a repeat of the match will your failures repeat Satan is plotting evil for you and you are two weeks left to fall into it and God is when you begin to sense some of you this is the season you are in right now you are sensing that you need to be alone with God make sure you run after koinonia and go and hide with God don't let people say there's so much demand on your anointing that is absolute nonsense you will die they will bury you you will become a lesson to many and the world will continue Please, let's go back to work on ourselves. I'm sorry, but I will have to tell you, some of you need to change your dressing. I've told you this thing. Take away some of these demonic things and take it out of your life and become a genuine Christian indeed. And please don't tell me it does not matter. Hallelujah. This it does not matter is the devil's trap to destroy our generation. It's not only prayer, it's not only fasting, it's not only rema. Even the devil has revelation. He used it on Jesus. We're talking about the uprightness and the character of the Christ. That when somebody looks at you, they don't say you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, you are Igbo. Uh -huh, you are behaving like them. Where are you from? <clears throat> the life of Christ has swallowed you so much. That's why I told you when it has to do with the formation of the character of the Christ, there are no champions there. Everybody is a healthy project at work by the mercy of God. When I lie down before God to cry here, I'm not going to lie down as Apostle Joshua Selman. No, I will roll before him and say, you who shows men mercy, have mercy upon this son of yours. Have mercy upon this son of yours. Leave all the text messages. Let the text messages keep coming. MOG, you are this. Let all the revelations keep coming. There are times you need to close those books and keep them aside. Don't let revelations fool you. There are times you need to close all of those things and just lie down in his presence and say, my father and my maker, I come before you. Let like the threshing floor of Naboth, let the refiner's fire rest upon me. Let there be a purification of my heart and my tendencies. Search my heart, O oh God, and try my thoughts. And if you find any wicked way in me, lead me to the way everlasting. And God says, this is the kind of vessel. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Man of God, we may not condemn you, but the secret place is calling for you. Businessman, we may not condemn you, but the secret place is calling for you. Father and mother, husband to your wife and wife to your husband, children to parents. The message and the language of condemnation is the language of children. But the language of condoning is the language of fools. You have to get back to the place of the altar and cry. Some of you may need to, I'm saying it again. You may need to have some time with God. Shut down your television. Shut down whatever. And say, Lord, it is me and you again. Look for a worship song like this. 
something playing and while people are snoring away the next the next 10 years of their lives you are crying before your maker and you are saying lord help me oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer the sacrifice of praise Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, when the glory comes. There'll be no words to say oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah Let me make an altar call up front before we pray You've heard the message already Apostle, I need Jesus I can't tell lies This message came to the core of my soul Whether you are in this auditorium or outside Please hear me if you are leaving this place right now and the trumpet sounds, can you honestly say that I have a stand with Jesus that will make heaven? Nobody condemns you, but he's giving you room for a new beginning. And you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I don't even know whether I'm standing in the faith or not. I'm going to count one to five. Please, I want you to run. Run and come and stand here right now he's giving you a new beginning one two don't mind who is looking at you come to jesus when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh. When Jesus said if you deny me in the presence of men that I will deny you before my father and even the holy angels for those who are following online whether you are following from the US the UK you are following by way of television help those under the anointing you are following by way of rebroadcast just leave them there let me tell you the truth God can give you a new beginning you are a man of God listening to me it does not matter what has happened to your life and your ministry please hear this preacher there is hope for you you can start afresh again with him one of the most powerful words in the Bible is the word again again businessman I know you went to a shrine to get all kinds of things done on your head for as long as you are alive there is still hope for you Apostle, you do not know what I've done with my life. Can I tell you the truth? If you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. Your own prerequisite is the genuineness of your brokenness. And let me tell you this, body of Christ, please, for this one time, hear this clarion call. Stop laughing at wounded soldiers within the body. Provided you find brokenness, be the person to rush to help wounded people to stand we are all standing by the grace of god and for anyone who is standing and shaking make sure you throw away pride and take your life seriously with brokenness do not say it does not matter 
that's what that's the true spirit of revival you have your pastor you have a man of God somebody who used to be on fire for God and the person has backslidden talking about them and laughing and just talking rubbish is not going to bring restoration at the least if you cannot do anything you owe your intercession Lord let this man of God not go down let this woman of God not go down Lord let this church not go down for the sake of your name preserve your heritage that's the character of a believer Oh, I used to know this musician. This one happened. I used to know this man of God. I used to know this businessman. Sometimes we pride in celebrating people's former glory. No. That's not the life we are called into. God is giving us an opportunity right now. He says, create in me a clean heart. For those who are standing, congratulations. But master the art of walking with God and in his presence. Cry before him day and night. Not in condemnation but in brokenness. Search my heart. Lord what else can destroy me in the next 5 or 10 years. Do not wait until I go there. I'm not ashamed if you reveal it to me. And cry before him at the altar. Anybody who acknowledges the state of men and the mercy of God will be very careful as you are dealing with issues in the body of Christ because let me tell you the truth this journey is very far and there are heights we do not even know how far we will go when you hear that someone's marriage was destroyed pray if you can support with your prayer and your counseling do so if you cannot keep quiet and pray you hear that somebody went to a herbalist pray provided if they if they become stubborn and rebellious they are doing it they are undoing themselves they will reap the consequences of rebellion but provided you find brokenness body of christ hear this preacher we have to rewrite the narrative of our response to wounded people within the body we need to be careful you hear that a politician who loved God before now has gone down spiritually. Don't just laugh at him and say foolish people. You don't know what it means to be in a position where you are sitting upon altars and charms. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. Please lift your hands, those of you who are in front. Thank you for the courage. Of coming out to make this decision and those who are following online the Lord Jesus sees your heart please say this after me some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word creating me a clean heart give me a new beginning I declare that you are my Lord you are my Savior you are my King I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am a child of God. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for bringing these ones. This is what this is all about. You're giving them an opportunity to start afresh again. You declare to us that whosoever sins we forgive that it is forgiven. Therefore, by the authority of Scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight until forever, I declare that you belong to Jesus. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to you. Please, I want you to follow the counselors, all of you. The counselors are just by my right, waving their hands towards you. May God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly as they go. Let's appreciate them very quickly as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Just a minute and we're out of this place. I just needed to bring out that which is consistent with what the Holy Spirit is doing. Just two quick announcements. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here,
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching